Heartbeat Alaska, here's Jeannie Green. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news and native entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home once again for native news. On today's program, we travel to the Athabascan village of Non-Dalton, Alaska. Here in Anchorage, Community Health Aid Forum was held. Natives from villages all over the state met. Also, elders met here in Anchorage. Even though we live in the city, the native tradition of listening to elders continues. Eve Little has a story from Nambi, New Mexico. We have all those stories plus much more. But first, here's Gary Fife with Native News Across the Nation. And I'll be back in just a moment, so don't go away. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. Haskell Indian Nations University has entered the fast-growing field of native informational video production. The school, located in Lawrence, Kansas, has produced a program on native water quality issues, and for the first time, the school has uplinked it on a satellite channel. Native panelists from different tribes around the nation discussed water issues from their different tribal perspectives. In Alaska, the U.S. Bureau of Land Management is asking for help in identifying contamination on lands conveyed to natives under the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, ANCSA. The BLM says it wants native corporations and groups to tell them about lands that contain contaminants from any number of sources. The intent is to prepare a report to the Interior Department when it goes to Congress seeking funds to clean up those sites. The Pueblo of San Ildefonso will be cracking down on drunk drivers on their New Mexico reservation. The tribe reports their emphasis will be on levying fines against non-tribal members for driving while intoxicated or having an open container in their vehicle since the tribe cannot legally criminally prosecute those non-tribal members. The Indian Health Service is taking applications from natives interested in a career in the health professions. Its health professions recruitment program aims to increase the numbers of Native Americans in the field and supply a pool of talent to Native health organizations. The deadline for application is June 3rd, and for more information, contact the offices of the Indian Health Service in Rockville, Maryland. In Nevada, a federal district court has decided that the state's laws on marital property ownership overshadowed those of the Western Shoshone tribe. In a case of a tribal member, member, member married to a non-tribal person who owed a big tax debt, the court upheld a penalty assessed by the Internal Revenue Service against the communal holdings of the couple, which included those of the tribal member. The court ruled Public Law 280 authorized the state to assume civil jurisdiction over the tribe. And finally, in 1992, the Peace and Dignity Run marked a native reaction to the quincentenary celebration of Columbus's journey to this hemisphere. In 1996, that run will be reoccurring, but this time from two starting points, the village of Chickaloon, Alaska, and a point in Argentina. They'll meet in Mexico at an ancient temple of the sun to recognize native endurance, sovereignty, and the spiritual run for world peace. The peace and dignity journey began on May 1st in Chickaloon with the Mexico arrival set for October 12th. And as always, if you have news or information about your native group, your tribe, or an event coming up, please share it with us. This is Native News Across the Nation. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Gary Fife, and back to Jeannie and more of our program. Thank you, Gary. Gary, by the way, will be in Bethel, Alaska this week. He's co-hosting Native American Calling, the national radio Native American talk show. It's being held in Bethel, Alaska. Let's travel now to Nambi, New Mexico. Things are heating up in that part of the country, and it's not because of the weather. Eve Little reports. 
and you can arrest me all you all you want. My second home was in jail, and I'm not worried about going to jail. The power struggle began in February when the Nambe Tribal Council removed then Governor Tony Vihil from office. He was to serve a two-year term, but instead Lieutenant Governor Lila Cascala was named Governor of Nambe Pueblo, population 600 members, located 20 miles northeast of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Tribal counselors say Vihil was removed from office for wrongdoings but they refused to identify the reasons for which he was removed. Although opponents of the dissidents say Vihil was removed amid allegations of sexual harassment charges and misappropriation of funds. This week, tensions boiled over. Dissidents, led by rebel councillor Tony Vihil, held a recall election over the weekend and then took over a tribal administration building. There's been um, families, um, friends, you know, and, and different parties that are splitting up because of this. Um, it's actually had people um, choose sides, which I don't think there really was really necessary. I think that um, if as a leader and someone who is concerned about the whole Pueblo uh, unity, about the whole community, would actually look at this a little more seriously and see what it's doing to the community. Pursuing this um, type of um, illegal elections and going around and demanding people sign petitions and a lot of things like this, this has, uh, has split the, the, the Pueblo in half. The takeover ended shortly when tribal cops backed by state police officers began arriving in increasing numbers. Dissidents left voluntarily, but not without securing a promise to meet with the tribal council. Meanwhile, others say the struggle between the two leaders is causing a division among families and friends in this small town where a meeting is scheduled to take place this week. The rebel councillors say they will ask for a recall election. In Nambe, New Mexico, I'm Eve Little for Heartbeat Alaska. They never thought the dream could come true. They never thought they could afford it. But on March 15th, Mike Turner and his family moved into their very first home. It was a HUD home. One of hundreds, HUD can help you all, or as little as 3% down. Ask a real estate agent about HUD homes and make your own dream come true. Looking for adventure? Want to get away? Let's go fishing! Unalakleet River Lodge welcomes you to their rustic Alaskan setting right on the Unalakleet River. Call now for reservations. Experience the real Alaska. Great food, great getaway, great fishing. Call toll free 1-888-450-3474. Great places and great times at the Unalakleet River Lodge. We're on the Outdoor Channel. Heartbeat Alaska is now reaching 31 states and 28,000 RV and recreational sites in the lower 48. Advertise your rural business with us. The tourists are coming. We'll leave them to your door. Call today, 907-563-7440. Heartbeat Alaska, bringing Alaska to the world and the world to Alaska. to the world. Join us as we report news from a native perspective. Heartbeat Alaska is the native news source for America. We welcome you to be a reporter. Call us today and we'll train you. Join the team. Heartbeat Alaska is picking up speed. We'll soon be in the Orient and in Europe. And every week, we're picking up more stations in the lower 48. And we here at Heartbeat Alaska need help. 
If you appreciate what we do, if you believe in our programming, please give us a call. Volunteers are welcome. Please call me at area code 907-563-7440. Don't just enjoy our programming, help make it happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here in Anchorage, Alaska, there are over 20,000 Native people that live here. Some of those are elders. South Central Foundation recently held a meeting to find out what their needs are and also to learn from them. How do you think we can improve the health care for all Alaska Natives? Somebody else want to speak to that? I just got surgery in... Um January 18th, and I would never have survived if my husband didn't take care of me, but I didn't know I was eligible for services here. We need to have more communication from our, uh, this uh, CITC. And I think we service 200 elders right now, home health care based, uh, within the Anchorage area. And we would like to consult them on if all their health care needs are met. I believe in elders' wisdom. They have, um, they have a lifelong history of knowledge. And I want to apply it all across the board, not just for elder care, but for care for kids, for care for middle-aged people, um, for all Alaska Natives, and then to the Anchorage area. They live in Anchorage but their voice echoes needs of elders everywhere. And like many elders in the village or on the reservation or in the city, medical care is often a big part of their lives. More Eskimo food. <laughs> more Eskimo, more Eskimo food. At, at nursing homes, really? At the patients in the hospital, uh, they're not, uh, they're always not like uh, English people, some don't understand in English. They, uh, there should be some available translator at the hospital too. From more native food to translators in the hospitals, the Anchorage elders voice their concerns. Needs that went beyond their own. They're also very concerned about the children. I think there's something that we all should do as grandparents and if we're still parents, is listen to your children. Listen to what they have to say. There is a message there someplace. The message from these elders, listen to your children, listen to your elders. No matter what age, everyone should have input in the world around them. You were born with a dream and with hope in your eye. The elders have led you and have bid you to try. Child of waters, rough with green. Child of the journey, walk with me.
Hold on to your purpose, hold on to your dream. What a great message. You probably have a dream, make it come true. At the elders' luncheon from South Central Foundation, one of the most often heard complaints was neglect. A message to today's youth, do not neglect the elders. Whether they live on a reservation in the city or in the village, neglect comes in many forms. We've got to remember that. Let's travel now to non-Dalton, Alaska. Thanks to video from Community Health Aid, Ron Lawfield. Non-Dalton, Alaska was established in 1909 on the north shore of Six Mile Lake by the Tanina Indians. In 1940, the community moved to its present location on the west shore of Six Mile Lake between Lake Clark and Ilyamna Lake with Anchorage, Alaska located 100 miles northeast. The local terrain is mountainous and lakes near the community provide spawning habitat for many of Bristol Bay's salmon. Today, Non Dalton is home to around 240 people. Big ears or little ears? Big ears. Let me see. <laughs> like many communities in rural Alaska, health services are provided by a small clinic staffed by a community health aide. The clinic has no x-ray, lab, or pharmacy facilities here. A doctor, dentist, and optometrist visit Non-Dalton every three months. Emergency medical care is provided by trained emergency medical technicians and the community health aide. The nearest hospital is located in Anchorage. Community health aides from outlying areas recently gathered in Anchorage for a community health aid forum. CHAs, community health aides, are the primary source of medical services in the villages. Trained in emergency medicine, these aides fulfill several vital functions in their communities. They provide primary, preventive, and emergency services. Non Dalton also has a mental health counselor, an alcohol counselor, and a community health representative. The Non Dalton School is part of the Lake and Peninsula Borough School District. There are seven full time certified teachers and one part time certified teacher, providing instructions to students in grades K through 12, making the student teacher ratio 11 to 1. That's the beauty of Non Dalton, Alaska. Only 240 people live here, well, 237 to be exact, except in the summer when an additional 10 people live here. To me, this is pretty amazing since camping and hiking, river rafting and sports fishing are commonplace. Maybe that's what makes Non Dalton so nice. We'll keep it a secret. We bring native news to the world. Join us as we report news from a native perspective. Heartbeat Alaska is the native news source for America. We welcome you to be a reporter. Call us today and we'll train you. Join the team. Hello, welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news and native entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green. This is native news across the nation. I'm Gary Five. Hello, Heartbeat Alaska from way down south, Windrock, Arizona. For Heartbeat Alaska and SKC Public TV, this is Annette Brown. For Heartbeat. I'm Eve Little in Taos, New Mexico. Non Dalton, Alaska is beautiful even during breakup. I bet it's really something in the summer, and I look forward to video from the viewers in Non Dalton, Alaska. Get your camcorder out and share us your beautiful village, all green and that beautiful lake. Thank you so much. And thank you, Janice Baluda and the mayor of Non Dalton for your help in that story. Earlier in the program, I promised you a brand new video from Cash Tin. Heartbeat Alaska introduced Cash Tin to Alaska viewers and to viewers in the lower 48. Well, here it is, the brand new video by Cash Tin. Show, eat the cool, eat your one. Just a nice show, 
Vita go Just in my show eat the go we to home Just in my show eat the go She with my thinking me this Thank you so much for joining us for another Heartbeat Alaska, Native News and Native Entertainment. So glad to have you with us. This time of year gets to be really exciting here in the north. The ice is starting to thaw, things are starting to happen, activities all over. Please don't forget Heartbeat Alaska. Share what's happening on your reservation. Share what's happening in your village with the rest of our viewers. For all of us here, I'm Jeannie Green. God bless and we'll see you again next week.